What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the camera, everyone. This is Lee, and yes, today's the day we'll be talking about a Sigma 35mm 1.4 R series lens versus the Fujifilm 35mm 1.4. And yes, yes, you guys voted for this two months ago. I asked the entire audience, name me your top five lenses you want me to view this year. And for some reason, this lens was top three. And I was really shocked because there are so many reviews of this lens on the internet. And I was wondering why you guys want me to review it. And I got the same response. You guys want me to review it. Yes, you guys want to see my review of this lens. And I was really flattered, but at the same time, I had to be really creative. So I thought about just comparing this lens to the Fujifilm 35 mm 1.4. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, let's get it going, guys. So the Sigma costs 700 SD, whereas the Fujifilm costs 600 SD. The Sigma weighs about 1.5 pounds, whereas the Fujifilm weighs about 6.6 .6 pounds. Now, I'm using two different bodies. I'm using a Pentax KP versus a Fujifilm X-T30. The Pentax KP is 24 megapixel. It has IBIS and also has weather resistant, whereas the Fujifilm is 26 megapixel BSI. It does not have weather resistant or IBIS, just keep that in mind. And also, while looking at my XF data, I noticed that the Fujifilm is slightly zoomed in, whereas the Sigma is slightly wider. And so I just wanted you guys to know that. So already on paper, the Fujifilm has the slight edge. It has two additional megapixel and it's slightly zoomed in to the subject. So with the lens, the Sigma has nine rounded blades, whereas the Fujifilm has seven rounded blades. The Sigma offers 13 elements, one of which has an FLD element. This is Sigma's highest level low dispersion glass element that they offer. Basically, it's for highlight transmission, so you'll see that in play throughout my test. Sigma also offers four SLD elements, two spherical elements, and also their super multi-layer coating. And in the end, they have a weather resistant around the mount, so that's something for you guys to know. Whereas the Fujifilm, is basically eight elements, one is spherical element, and the rest is their super EPC coating. So we'll see that in play. And also in this entire test, I'm using auto white balance and everything else is on default. You will be able to see the color accuracy. Hopefully at the end of this comparison, you guys can definitely see which one is better. So let's begin guys. So here's the scene that I created. And right before we get started, I just wanted you guys to know that this champagne bottle right here in the scene is actually pure gold. Whatever color you see in this comparison, that is what it gave me, guys. Now, at 1.4 on the Fuji, the Bokeh Balls, you can see a slight blue collaboration. It's really tiny. It's kind of not noticeable in real world usage, but it's there. And on the far left, everything looks quite identical. Now around F2, you could definitely see a little collaboration still on the Bokeh Balls on the Fuji. And on the far left, you don't see too much except a squish bokeh ball. Don't know what that's about. Around f2.8, everything looks quite identical actually. Really, uh, yeah, uh, there's no complaints here. At uh, 2.8, everything looks quite similar in a way. F4, you could slowly see that the sunbursts of the bokeh balls are forming, but there's no real significant difference. But around 5.6, you can now slowly see the sunbursts around the bokeh balls on the Sigma. It looks a lot more elegant than the Fuji so far. And uh, yeah, the Fuji look a little faded on the sunburst, but that's just my own opinion. Around F8, you can now totally see the pattern of the starburst. Uh, the Sigma looks really nice. The Fuji looks kind of wishy-washy at this point. And around F11, Definitely the sunburst on the Sigma looks very nice. It's better than the Fuji, pretty much. But uh, this is definitely for all the bokeh lovers out there. So if you are a bokeh lover and a starburst lover, this is something for you guys. Now let's take a look at an outdoor scene. And this is a shot under a bridge. Not much lighting going on, but let's take a look at the scene at 1.4. This is really petty on my part. Uh, this is... I think that the Fuji is softer by hair. The Sigma seems a bit sharper. And uh, if you look at the bolt, uh, just have to give it the Sigma. Sigma looks a bit sharper than the Fuji at this point at 1.4. Just take a look at the bolt. Now let's take a look at F2. You could definitely see the top part of the bar. It looks a bit more sharper on the Sigma than the Fuji. Just a slightly more sharper. And take a look at the bolts. Definitely the Sigma looks much more nicer than the Fuji in sharpness wise. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at the edges. 
and uh, yeah definitely I will give to the Sigma at f2 f2.8 f2 now we are looking it looks it looks very even at f2.8 to be quite honest in this setting right here f2.8 looks very identical I don't see much issues with f2.8 so far but around f4 things look still quite identical actually I, I don't see much of a huge difference to uh, point out but uh, yeah around 5.6 is the same deal actually of around 5.6 you could you, we're just pulling hairs at this point but it's it looks very identical at 5.6 and now here's f8 now let's uh, I, th I would give it to maybe the Sigma, but uh, yeah, let's just, you know what, we're just going to, we're just going to zoom in a little bit. Let's just zoom in and we'll, we'll see. And it looks, I think Sigma got it just by a hair. As you, as you can see, this is just pulling hairs at this point in this environment. So definitely the Sigma wins in total sharpness, but it's really close versus the Fuji. Now here's the stadium test. This is across the street from Giddy Images. And as you can see already, at 1.4, you can already tell that the arc on the top of the stadium, the Fuji cannot handle the highlight transmission. It's just pretty bad up there. You lose a lot of detail and it's just pretty bad for the Fuji at this point. And uh, the auto white balance is, you know, pretty off as well. But, but if you take a look at the back, you can definitely see a lot of ghosting happening on the Fuji. And, uh, but keep in mind, the Sigma do have collaboration, but I would definitely pick the Sigma over the Fuji just because it looks pretty bad, guys. Um, you see a lot of ghosting going on and it's just, you're paying 1.4 money, but you're not getting the right 1.4 performance. And uh, yeah, the, the ghosting is pretty harsh on this Fuji. It's just, it's everywhere, guys. It's just, wow. And F2.8, it's a bit, uh, same story, it's a bit washed out on the Fuji. You can see a little bit more detail on the Sigma. You can see the nuts and bolts up there. You can see the rendition on it, on the Sigma looks a bit more detail. It just looks a bit, you know, soft on the Fuji at this point. And uh, that's pretty disappointing. Okay, this is 2.8 outdoors and the Sigma is handling the light transmission like no other. Around F4, I would have to say that things are actually around F4. Things get really quite even around F4. I, I couldn't find anything that, that stood out, but everything around F4 looks totally identical. Everything looks very identical, so that's pretty good news for both lens. Um, yeah, F4, it looks very identical in this situation. I can't say too much about it. Around 5.6, things start to look a bit more better on the Sigma and you could definitely tell by the text on the background you could definitely look at you could definitely see the overall environment is actually a lot sharper on the Sigma and around F8 same deal F8 it looks so close and around F8 it looks really close until you look at the text and fonts of these posters it's the same deal it's just a bit sharper on the Sigma at this point. Let's say if you're a professional photographer, you only have these two choices. And also keep in mind, these two are actually the same amount of money. Which one would you end up buying? My honest recommendation would be the Pentax KP with the Sigma 35, just because number one, it has IBIS. Number two, it's weather resistance. Number three, it has the best image quality throughout the entire aperture range. But if you're buying the Fujifilm over the Pentax Sigma rig, that just because number one is stylish, number two is compact and low profile. And also, I just want to thank all the Fuji shooters that added me on my Instagram. We went back and forth through these tests two weeks ago, and, and here's what we came up with. By adding these files to Capture One, there was no significant benefits. Yes, there's no benefits in putting Lightroom to Capture One with these highlighted files. It just, it was the same outcome. With the Fuji Studio, it's a free program. It just got worse. Yes, Fuji program got worse with these Fuji files. I don't know why. It just not reading it correctly. All in all, this review was really interesting to do. I was actually really confused as to what I was seeing. It took about two weeks to do this review. And the reason being is because I want to get it right. I did over 20 different test comparisons. It was crazy. I was talking to many people out there and it was just basically at the end of the day, 
it was in my settings. It was basically the FOD element in the Sigma R series lens. And that just tells me that a lot of these compact lenses out there cannot compete with these bigger lenses because they have too much elements and too much variety of different elements to combat the lighting transmission out there. And so that's just something that is really difficult for these compact lenses to do. And it just, it makes sense, right? So I know a lot of Fuji owners out there that own the 35 mm 1.4, you guys won't ever notice this at all because you don't have, well, if you do have this, but I doubt that you're doing this, you don't have nothing to compare it with. You're just shooting a 35 mm 1.4 wide open you'll take the shot and you'll see that it's overexposed and you just you know tune down your settings right whereas with the sigma shooting wide open was insane the entire scene was blown out it was sunny it was just massive highlight everywhere and for some odd reason the sigma art lens was able to capture all those details that just shows that how great the 35 mm 1.4 art lens series is that third party lens is like a staple to many people out there and if you're a canon shooter a sony shooter a nikon shooter pentex shooters that is a staple out there and what can i say that lens is a beast 35 mm 1.4 series is a beast but if you own a fuji 35 mm 1.4 it's still a good lens it's just not as good as the 35 mm art series lens and uh, if anything it's a good vacation lens pretty much so anyways guys thank you guys for checking me back i know i have one more comparison left for you guys and uh yeah this is the end of this fuji series pretty much and so i guess i'll see you guys in the next one right take it easy peace